dear students we will be focusing in this module to have a discussion on various stages of demographic transition the learning objectives of this session is we will be discussing about transitions in three stages the demographic transition in five stages the demographic transition focused by variable wise and the transition theory as integrated with other theories what are the different stages which was postulated by the notastian notastian is the scholar who has coined the concept of demographic transition and brought out the theory now as per notastian there are three stages which are uh, in demographic transition these major three stages are in the first stage where the society will experience high fertility and mortality the second stage there will be decline but the decline in mortality is uh, relatively higher and the third stage is where the decline in fertility is at a smaller level compared to the decline in uh, mortality and the last stage is where both fertility and mortality comes down drastically let's talk about the stage 1 the characteristics of the first stage is that both birth and death rates are very high and this will stabilize over the long term what are the stages in this in this first stage the improvement in sanitation improvement in medical technology and also the agriculture development the industrial development especially the transport and other infrastructural development are they all not as well developed so given this lack of proper sanitation lack of medical technology agriculture development and transportation so they all have an impact on birth rates birth rates which is needed to be very high for population to continue high mortality rate was taken as a given as methods to decrease mortality become available it was taken up to lead long health life led to declining mortality rates but we need to understand the society's norms values and sanctions which all encourage fertility we at you know changes will become very slow birth rates that is why they become at higher level since low death rates and high birth rates are good the situation of high death rates and high birth rates are unstable the second stage is marked by a reduction in mortality rates the fertility rates continue to be high as in the previous stage due to institutionalization that encourages fertility and the difference between mortality and fertility which is going to be a sharp growth in population this is the characteristic of stage 2 in the stage 3 which is marked by individual efforts to regulate their fertility behavior which will lead to fertility decline that comes after the mortality decline and shall clearly reflecting on the deeply embedded norms and traditions towards fertility reductions that needs to be seen as a change the small family norm due to urbanization and industrialization brings reduction in the fertility the societal changes leads to individuals increasingly controlling fertility behavior supported by greater knowledge availability and the later development of better methods which all are conducive for family fertility declines which leads to a decline in pressures from family and society that encouraged fertility decline also we need to understand that value of children also declines due to the spread of education and children were no longer treated as a important you know work in the workforce families also notice that death rates decline particularly infant mortality so they need to have fewer children to satisfy their desired family size cp blacker in 1947 has brought out 
the various stages of demographic transition and classified them into five. Blaker's demographic cycle outlines five stages of transition that take place during urbanization and industrialization of a society. These five stages are high stationary phase, early expanding phase, later expanding phase, low stationary phase and last one as a declining phase. He had developed the model to understand the decline in fertility levels, although he considered the real problem to be the rapid rise in population prior to this model as explains some of the influences that contributed to various stages. High stationary phase where the birth rates are very high and also stable over time, the death rates are also very high and vary between extremes over time because population tends to be dependent on subsistence based agriculture when the yield is abundant population increases in other year, in, other year, in other years affected by diseases or natural disasters and that is why population decline becomes a, an issue. Next is early expanding phase, birth rates high as earlier, death rates are well below them frequently declining, these are the major characteristics of this phase and due to this the rapid population rise is a characteristic. This is called an initial response to the transition. The newer agricultural methods, fertilizers, development of transport facilities, medical practices which are offered, irrigation facilities, rise in society and the governance issues, development of mechanization industries which all have leads to this phase of change in the demographic transition. The best example is uh, India during 1881 to 1921 and during this period the movement from high stationary to early expanding phase has taken place. The characteristics are between 1911 to 1921 birth and death rates were close at high levels, 1921 to 1931 death rates declined significantly demonstrating entry into the second phase that was population was expected to rise significantly every decade. The next phase is labeled as late expanding phase. The characteristics are decline in birth rate and death rates. The death rates constantly lower than the birth rates and due to that population increases annually. The example we can take a Russia at the time move to the late expanding phase. Until 1921, the country had very high birth rates, but after 1934 and 35, the birth rate declined until at their lowest level. After market and considerable increase in the birth rates, likely due to abortion policies, population policies and other measures, death rates and birth rates were falling, but, red, but birth rates at a much slower pace. The next stage is called a stationary phase, where Low birth and death rates are the characteristics, use of the net reproduction rate is ideal which is realized by the couple, it captures the reproductive behavior of childbearing women in any region. This is also very important that the fertility is below replacement level is one of the characteristics. When a country moves to this stage, the index is always at a below unity as demographic information required may not be available earlier or may be less reliable in earlier stages. The next phase is declining phase. All countries in the world prefer not to enter this phase especially because death rates indicates that birth rates and immigration is one of the important aspects where population decline unless there is part of the expanding demographic cycle which is a characteristic here. Example, the then France was the only country to have a situation where death rates were greater than their birth rates for more than brief periods of time. In 1911 to 20, death rates were significantly greater than birth rates but due to policies after World War II, the situation changed. Between 1921 and 1935, birth rates 
exceeded death rates after death rates exceeded birth rates also population policies immigration which have helped and compensate for the low birth rates delay in transition can be avoided through certain policies like uh, food policies family planning policies development of women's movements in different regions is also one of the important uh, characteristics which have been highlighted by blacker the, the biggest long run problems is the demographic disequilibrium an imbalance there the countries in earlier stages of the transition the standard of living could be increased to reduce inequalities and reduce wastages of food supplies were abundant while others are at bare levels these are some of the important aspects the other important is the, the different transitions the stages of the transition are discussed in terms of various transition such as mortality transition the fertility transition transition in population growth and age distribution important is about the mortality transition beginning of mortality decline way back in 19th century europe is an example the reasons for mortality decline as mentioned earlier is very important for us to understand for many low income countries the decline began in the 20th century and began late but the gains in life expectancy were far more rapid which is a very clearly seen in the age and the sex pyramid that is depicted in this slide these are some of the important things and we need to understand the mortality trends for the future for example by the end of the 21st century projection shows that life expectancy can be to the extent of 90 years and other estimates indicates by 2050 83 years assuming biological limits to life span similarly life expectancy across different regions has increased as a whole as of 2003 for example of two trends can be expected one is an increase in death rates in the 1990s in countries especially in sub sahar saharan africa due to hiv or aids epidemic second in countries in eastern europe and the soviet union life expectancy has either declined or stagnant in two to three decades prior to 2003 likely due to transition to market economies now let's look at uh, the various transitions that are currently you know experienced by various communities one of the important aspect is the fertility transition the beginning of the fertility transition for instance in europe which started in 19th century till early 20th century where fertility levels started declining drastically now fertility and mortality interact in complex ways and the reduction in infant mortality impacts parental decision making in influencing their fertility behavior these roles are often primary for women and so the opportunity cost increases given the education occupational support systems that are placed which are conducive for women also have an impact and influence on fertility decline and further the extent of contraceptive use is also one of the important issues that needs discussions other important aspect is uh, that how different countries in the globe have experienced the fertility decline for instance most of the developed countries their experiences in fertility transition was uh, at the early stages and in during uh, especially say 1960 to 2003 which are characterized by baby booms and buzz after which the fertility declined to well below the replacement level similarly in the case of for instance least developed countries the fertility transition started later and from a very high slightly higher level of fertility after which it was a matter of how rapid and also to what extent it has influenced in the reduction as far as less developed countries fertility transition began later especially in the mid late 1960s but far more rapid and reaching replacement levels in 2 to 3 decades best example is for instance in east asia the experiences have more rapid decline and experiences it earlier than these countries in south asia and also latin america 
these are some of the countries which have shown a tremendous impact on the fertility behavior. Similarly, the rates of childbearing are highest in the years 2019-20 to early 30s. In several developed and developing countries, age at marriage and at first birth are increasingly at higher level contributing to fertility decline. As per the UN sub-Saharan experience is a experiencing a slow rate of fertility transition while the rate in less developed countries is declining in speed nearing replacement levels. For the most developed countries, fertility levels are anticipated to move, move back to replacement levels. And if you look at the population growth way back in 1950, the scenario was before 1950, rate of population growth for least and less developed countries which was not certain in its trend. As of 1950, fertility and mortality levels for the least developed countries were higher than those in the less developed countries. For the least developed countries, which have a higher level of fertility and mortality levels than the most of the developed countries, and for the most developed countries, it increased by a fraction of a percent, fraction of a percent more than in the less developed countries as early as in 1950. But after Second World War, the less developed countries saw a rapid increase in the population growth at its highest in the mid-1960s, after which there was a sharp decline. In the initial stages of the transition, all countries had between moderate to rapid population growth except a country like India. But for all, the decline in mortality levels was prior to the decline in fertility levels, resulting in a rapid rise in population. While differences in per capita GDP between countries is increasing, differences between fertility and mortality levels between countries is also shown it's at increasing levels. The other important aspect which we need to understand is the age distribution. Even when fertility, mortality and population growth rates have reached steadily, the age distribution of the population shifts due to prior conditions. For instance, population growth affects drastically the age distribution. Initially, the mortality decline that takes place it is, a, in the, is the highest, youngest years, which leads to an increase in the share of children in the total population, which further leads to increase in the child dependence ratios. The population becomes younger and the effect can last as long as 70 years, which leads to further difficulties for families and governments to meet the rising demands. Decline in fertility levels affects child dependence ratios, which leads to a decline in pre-transitional levels. The working age population increases more rapidly than the whole population, decreasing the, decreasing the total dependence ratio. The phase may last up to 50 years, there may be problems such as unemployment and benefits as the larger workforce is the reality. The third phase of age distribution, which is the major characteristics under this phase is life expectancy increases, increases the elderly population, while the increase in the working age population slows down due to low fertility levels. The old age and total dependence ratio increases, which may mean a larger burden for working age persons. A variety of economic effects begin and at the end of this transition, the total dependence ratio, that is pre-transition levels. However, there is also now a low child dependence ratios and a high old age dependence ratio. In the case of expectation, what is the expectation for the 21st century? mortality will continue to fall, continuing the process of population aging, which are going to be the major characteristics in this period. In the 1950, fertility and mortality in least developed countries were higher than those in less developed countries with the slow changes since that time, and which is very clearly observed in least developed countries where they move from increasing youth dependency ratios towards an increasing working age population. In the less developed countries, increasing the 
working age population or the bonus phase which comes earlier in 1960 1970s expected to be till around 2020 after which the child dependency will will far and also old age dependency will rise the more developed countries are in the other direction where in this phase of stage where population aging is a more significant and most of the countries in the developed countries are experiencing this stage. These be four stages and when we talk about its relation with urbanization, a model connects demographic process to urbanization could force that a population moves from primarily rural to primarily urban through three variables of fertility, mortality and migration. If we talk about pre-transitional societies, urbanization which is a very importantly very low, what is the characteristic is that there is a high crude death rates and crude death rates and also crude birth rates are in the same levels and for the population to continue growing rural to urban migration also occurs. Urban growth is limited mainly due to international migration as high urban death rates are prevalent, urban growth is limited to the extent of urbanization. Mortality decline that occurs initially is mainly due to the decline in infectious diseases due to which the death rate falls more rapidly in urban areas than in rural areas. The second stage which marks out when urban death rates decline below urban birth rates and population increases. The urban population begins to grow and there is no longer a calling a ceiling with regard to urbanization. Rural urban migration was initially the main reason for urban growth, but with increasing urbanization, urban growth is likely to arise primarily from natural population increase and the ultimate expectation that it will be well before the population of 50 percent being an urban. The third stage begins when death rates in urban areas decreases below that in rural areas, making it possible for autonomous urbanization to occur, where increased population growth rates in urban areas is more than rural areas. This is unlikely situation where urbanization would occur without migration, but the reality is that net rural to urban migration makes place, takes place throughout the demographic transition and such migration is necessary for urban areas to exist. And the fourth stage of demographic transition and also its linkages in urbanization, which is important, which helps us to know that which it develops and expands connecting migratory process to demographic factors, calling it the mobility transition in terms of the five phases. Phase one, pre-modern traditional society, where the birth rate, death rates have a, a different phases of its uh, influence. Phase two, the early transitional societies where the vital rates also have a different dynamics in its transition. Phase 3, the late transitional society where the reduction in the birth rate declines to a large extent and the death rates continue to be falling but the phase begins at to a slowdown. This increase in natural population growth which is considered but slowing down with rates below that prevalent in phase 2 and phase 4, the advanced society stage where the birth rate and death rates start showing its uh, reduction and migratory movements is another component which also adds in this phase. That is why the, the next stage where a future super advanced society is a major indicator where the birth rates cannot be ascertained. They can be said that the decision making with regard to fertility behavior will uh, increase and possibly due to measures such as programs and schemes developed by various governments. Death rates estimated the mortality levels will be consistent in the phase and uh, fertility levels will be as close to these death rates. Migratory movements is another conditional factors which also have you know have its own influence. So these are some of the stages in which we may have to understand 
the various stages of demographic transition. So each country has important role. We need to understand the stage in which each of these societies are moving and how from various stages and what are the characteristics of uh, influence and contributory factors for these changes are very, very essential for us to understand in un linking with uh, the demographic features with uh, the levels of development of the society.